Hey guys, Mike Perna coming at you with a quick video on home updates, which I think is very nifty. Um, so I had this question today. We do a weekly Saturday webinar, Austin, my director of sales and I, where we just take questions from everybody, the general public. Uh, I'll make sure to include a link to that uh, to sign up for it, uh, for this post. It's a great way to get questions answered. Um, great way, and frankly, a great way to do so kind of kind of while you're in the crowd, so to speak before buying or selling and before even picking up the phone or talking to an agent. Because I know a lot of times people, they just have general real estate questions for moves that are coming up maybe in a year or even two years, but they're looking at projects and renovations now. And that's what I want to talk about. My name is Mike Perna um, with the Perna Group Realtors with Keller Williams. Um, I've been in the business for 19 years. Uh, we're selling over 700 homes a year. Um, if you're considering getting into real estate, click that link. Um, if you are looking at purchasing a home, click that link. If you are looking for evaluation, click that link. Um, yeah, we do a lot of links. Pretty good stuff, right? I want to get people directly where they need to go. And again, please feel free to reach out anytime directly 248-714-0980 with any questions. All right, on with the show. So today we had a really nice question in the, in the chat uh, and I thought I really wanted to put this out there. And the question was uh, basically off a comment that I had made about a lot of improvements you don't necessarily get the money back on, um, which is true. And the question was, you know, which major improvements do we not see a full return or more on investment? Right, um, and to be more more specific, this person was looking at p potentially doing a kitchen, bathroom, uh, finishing a basement on an unfinished home, um, unfinished basement home, that kind of a thing to try to push the value up. And they're really looking for like a one and a half times or two times return on investment. Um, and here's my answer: Number one, it is specific to community. And here's what I mean by that. Okay. There are communities where they have very, very big swings as far as price per square foot goes, right? So like a Royal Oak, for example, where you can have a home sell between 175 and 225 or even higher per square foot at $50 a square foot swing that we can get you on that appraisal or at least get close to because buyers will buy a little bit over appraisal, but most of them don't, they just can't buy a lot of it over appraisal. Those big, big, big swings it could be worth doing the kitchens, the bathrooms, and the basement, or picking one of those three projects. Kitchen first, frankly, guys, kitchen first. Um, now, here's what I mean by that. Like in Royal Oak, I was looking at one home that had sold at, at 190, and an almost identical home sold at 270, almost identical. The biggest two differences were, on one, it had original bathroom, original kitchen, unfinished basement. On the other, it had original bathroom, but it had new kitchen and finished basement. Now, that $80,000 differential in price is greater than the cost of the kitchen and the cost of the basement for that home, the way that they did it. And I, I saw all the photos on it. I did the research on it, right? I mean, yeah, technically, I guess you could spend 80000 between those two to get what you got, but you also would have overpaid vastly. <laughs> just, and then that's just, those kitchen, that kitchen and that basement. Now, same token, right? Let's flip this around and go with, with a same 50s ranch or same 60s ranch, but put it in a different city. Look at Allen Park. I sold my grandmother's home in Allen Park this year and that was a very, very different situation, right? So the swings in Allen Park were much smaller because the price per square foot variance and price per square foot in general was much, much smaller, right? So here's what I'm saying. So in Allen Park, when we did the math, we found that homes like my grandmother's at that time, in the low end, were selling at 155. At the high end, the number one home sold at 173. So market stretch a little bit, maybe 175 or even 176 is where that 173 would be four months into the future because home values have gone up, right? Right, that's a thing we know. Now, when my dad and I sat down and looked at all the numbers, um, we made the decision that we were going to leave the original kitchen and original flooring. We made the decision that we were going to paint the home because you get a great return on investment on paint. We were not going to finish the basement and we didn't replace the carpet even though it was about as old as I am and I'm going to let everybody guess as to what, what age that is. Um, hopefully guess lower. I mean, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm aging all right. Um, but it was definitely way past its prime and we ended up just having it cleaned real well, right? Actually having it cleaned twice. Uh, at the end of the day, we sold the home at 162. 
Simple enough. Now, had we done the kitchen, the bathroom, and the basement, could we have gotten more money? Absolutely. And if we did, it would have cost us between thirty-five and forty-five thousand dollars. Just being completely realistic with that number. But we only would have gotten back if we were going to match the high home, one seventy-three, maybe one seventy-six. And let's even say that we've got a buyer that's willing to pay, you know, let's say two percent or even three percent above appraised value. We're still maxing out at one eighty. That's an eighteen thousand dollar difference, right? And then we also looked at another scenario where, okay, we've got a paid off property. What if we did those things or waited and did those things later and then rented the house out for a year and then made a thousand a month in profit because that's about, about after taxes, insurance, you know, all of that stuff, the, the, the amount of monthly profit. So that would have been $12,000 plus 10% added in appreciation. And we still got to take into account the 35 to 45,000 for those three items to redo them, right? When my dad and I sat down, we just realized that we were robbing Peter to pay Paul, right? The best course of action was to make this a clean home, get rid of the little bit of wallpaper there was, get the carpets cleaned, um, do the paint. You know, we have the entire house painted, which we did, and we went with, with the chic gray colors of the time, right? Picked them up myself. Um, and honest to God, yeah, did we did we miss the mark by let's call it eleven to fourteen thousand as far as the highest possible number? Sure, we did. But we also didn't do a $20,000 kitchen. We didn't do a ten or a $15,000 basement, and we didn't do a five or an $8,000 bathroom. Plus all the aggravation of doing that stuff, right? And all the, the pain of holding the home for those three months because contractors are harder to come by. So again, guys, if you're considering a major renovation and you're considering moving sometime in the next, let's call it 36 months or less, please give me a call directly first so I can make sure to guide you in that right direction. Because we may want to, instead of putting, let's say, you know, and, and I just had a client do this, where they put $100,000 into a home, turned around, and 12 months later, they did decide to make that move because they wanted that, that next up square footage, right? I've also had it happen the other way. I had somebody purchase a home in Bloomfield Hills, put 300,000 into the home, turn around a year later and said, you know what, I really don't want the big, big home. I don't want to maintain it. I travel for work more than I thought, and I need to get that back on the market. For both of those situations, that was money just lost, right? Because they were because those homes were already hitting close to max value. And yes, I can get largely, I can get a buyer for the most part to pay a little bit above, above appraised value because buyers are educated. They do understand that the appraisals are 90 days behind reality as far as sales prices go, right? And in a market that's going up, that means our appraisals will generally speaking come in two to $5,000 under, and they gotta shore up that gap if they want the house or we'll move on to the next buyer. But what I can't do is I can't guarantee I can get a buyer to pay 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 100,000 above appraised value. Because frankly, most buyers, you know, they're, they're going in for the down payment, they're going in for the closing costs, they might have five or 10,000 extra budgeted in case they need it, but budgeting an extra 70 or 80,000 for an appraisal or coming up with that kind of a, kind of a cash flow or cash in hand at the closing 30 days later, for the most part, that's a no-go. People just cannot afford to pay that much above, above appraised value, right? So again, before you start a renovation project, if you're considering selling in the next three years or less, I would definitely consult an agent. Give me a call anytime, 248-714-0980. Thank you again for tuning in. Thinking about buying, thinking about selling, shoot me a call, shoot me a text. I'm always here. Make it a great day.